The problem of uh, young people's mental health has been, you know, a public health issue all over the world. Uh, we are very much aware that uh, most of uh, the adults' uh, mental health challenges all begin, you know, from the ages of, I mean, 13, 14, 15. And so, as a society, if you want to build a, a productive, you know, a society, a healthy society, then we need to take the issues of young people's mental health seriously. I mean, on all indicating indications, you realize that the incidence of mental health is rising. Limited attention has been granted to the mental health of young people. It is against this background and other support for more dedicated programs that focus on this vulnerable population. The big initiative supported by Grand Challenges Canada has taken this bold initiative. In Ghana, we adopted a range of methodologies to be able to engage and develop programs, including policy makers, young people, including those from schools, as well as people that are in extremely vulnerable, including MSMs. As a student, um, I've come to the realization of um, uh, that there are a lot of things that we face. The major ones that I've seen and realized are the anxiety and the stress that comes with learning. Most of the time, the, the, the longer periods of time that the uh, lecture hall and then um, the, the anxiety that we face during the examination period. Sometimes the nature of the examination time period, it doesn't even favor, like for instance, I'm having um, three papers in the day or um, um, Saturday, Sunday, I'm having papers continuously. I mean, you can imagine the kind of things that we go through as a student. So, because of this, and most of the time, some of them, I mean, if you come, if you come, if it's on record, you can ask some of the lecturers here. Some students don't even show up to the examination. I remember last semester, a particular paper, um, to my right, about four people did not show up. And I was wondering, and you can realize that um, based on certain days, I think uh, some people had like continuous papers, like from Monday to Thursday. Uh, this is, these are some of the major problems that I see. I came to be a part of the stakeholder who was taking me on mental health of young people as a uh, participant. And then left me uh, depressed for a while, and then I developed some um, post traumatic stress disorder. And there were things that I used to love that I couldn't do anymore. So, as a young person, I can say that we face a lot of issues that regard mental health. Like, sometimes you feel very stressed, there's this feeling of anxiety, you are depressed at some point, and so many more. I think it's very important to address such issues because, apart encounters with other young people where they share their experiences as well and I think it's very important for us to address it. Last year in 2023, I was invited for the Youth Mental Health Project where I met other young people and then we shared our experiences and our ideas on mental health as well. I think depression is mostly part of some of the mental issues young people are facing outside anxiety, behavioral disorder. To be honest, um, last year 2023 when I went for the program, that was how my view changed from mental health. Yeah, I knew that there was something like mental health, but I didn't have that deep knowledge about mental health. I just knew that it was something like having this disorder, having post I thought it was pregnancy and um, depression and all that. But I got to, after going for the conference, I got to understand what mental health is all about. And I feel like um, enough is not being done. Because as a young person who is out of school, I'm always in the house. And I feel like the audience, people who are actually experiencing things, are those who are in the communities.
แต่ในขบวนเดินทางบนเส้นแต่ดับไปแต่มันมีเสียงเสียงว่าจอดดีวีแต่สิ่งนู้นวีน่าไม่มีพวกเขาที่บีบีอาร์ซึ่งมีมุกแบบของมุกที่ sometimes I feel very bad to avoid high jumping and meet some girl who was scared and dressed On a daily basis, since I'm a young person, um, I need to build a strong relationship with friends and family, especially all of in our Amazon community, which I find myself in. Because since they are older enough, they've known enough, so I need to build a strong relationship with them for them to give me for what I need, not to be delayed and dealing with my past. So I think going forward, there's a call to action, and then there's a need for all of us to join in the action so that the mental health issues can be addressed once and for all. For example, on campuses, I think it's very necessary to create more events and so on, say institutions where you can reach out to people to talk to them freely about. Mental health issues that maybe are facing, without fear of being stigmatized, and also I think once there's more engagement and new dialogues, we we can reach out to other peers that don't have much information on mental health. I'm making an appeal, calling on all stakeholders out there to involve us as the youth, as us going through the situation that we want to address. Because we are the ones facing the challenge, we are the ones going through the problem and then our, our say is going to help them come up with other interventions. So please, all the stakeholders out there, before you come up with anything, please uh, hear our voices, consider our voices, come to us so that we will tell you what you are going through and I believe that that at the end uh, will, be, will all be able to reach our goal. I believe that we must work as a family, we must work as a network. Yeah, so anytime we come across anybody at all who is documented of being, be it a young person, be it an adult, be it a family member, then they can at least offer some uh, basic tips and possibly also link such people to you know, such you know, professional networks. And so this youth mental health program thing that is the way to go and I personally would want to appeal to all stakeholders, you know, who have already committed themselves that they should continue to make their commitment. And I believe that we will work together. So in the schools, I would recommend that we will also uh, we will promote school-based mental health programs where occasionally we can bring in mental professionals to come and talk to them, you know, the students. Just we can build their mental health interests. So putting all the methodologies together produced us a very unique and interesting findings. And we are happy as part of this engagement to share these findings with our key stakeholders. In fact, we have realized that common occurrences, things that we have taken for granted, are among the things that disturb young people's mental health. A case of mention is bullying 
which is like a normative culture in our school setting. This has identified as one of the priority drivers of young people's mental health. And indeed, there are other more exciting findings. So stay tuned, join us, and participate as we discuss these issues, and more importantly, how to innovatively develop programs to improve and enhance the mental health of young people. My name is Adam Manu, a senior lecturer at the Department of Population in Terminal Reproductive Health, School of Public Health, University of Ghana. I was a co principal investigator. So as we watch the documentary, um, a lot of things happened, and I'm here to share what happened uh, with us. So police, camera, the presentation uh, is in five goals. First, introducing us to young people and that is the issue for the study. The methodology that we have to use. Young people uh, in, in Ghana, we say Ghana is a institution that is aggregated in Ghana, which is that implication. But from recent statistics, we can see that about 35 people in Ghana are aged 0 to 14 years. And then we have 38 people aged 15 to 35 years. So within this bracket, you see people aged 10 to 24 years, and it can constitute a, a great number of the population that we have. So technically, in Ghana is an aging population, it's a young population or it's a youth population, which means that young people should be a priority for several reasons. The key among them is the fact that they are the suitable replacement for the aging or the aging population that um, we are having. Have been designed to actually promote and enhance the mental health of young people. 
and you are also at a glance and able to tell what the priority research areas are for investment in young people's mentality. So these questions are the linked one were sampled by the support of the big initiative. And as my colleague Adina indicated, then our partners in Tanzania were generous enough to reach out to us in Ghana to actually respond to the call from the big initiative. And so this whole thing that you're seeing is because of the, the right thing of the big initiative. So in that regard, we adopted a range of methodology to try to understand of these questions that have been posed. And this methodology actually comes in um, four forms. First was to conduct the scoping review. Second, we did stakeholder engagement, a series of them. And then there were online survey or data collection, which all together all culminated in a consensus building exercise focusing on several areas, key among them being priority mental health issues, priority drivers, priority interventions areas, and then priority research areas for, for the country. And in the next slides, I'm going to take us briefly to some of these strategies. So the scope review was done for the last 20 years, so we, we tend to understand what empirical evidence exists in the context of young people in the last 20 years and the methodology that adopted them was scoping because they must understand everything. So just scoping everything has been produced in the scholarly literature. This was guided by the PRISMA methodology and as you can see on the board, putting all together, we identifying about 114 studies uh, which speak directly to young people's mental health, given the age restriction and other criteria that we, we predetermined for the exercise. So this was reviewed, and the insights we got from this scope review fed into developing data collection tools which facilitated engagement with stakeholders. And so stakeholders were invited uh, but of course, the process started with mapping out who the relevant key, uh, key stakeholders are. And with the support of data from the mental health authority, we developed a list using the stakeholder influence and interest metrics, which was helpful in deciding who should be engaged or who is forthcoming in the engagement process. So, a series of this was held, and the first was with um, just a summary of the stakeholder engagements that were produced. Um, there are people that we say ecosystem stakeholders. These are policy makers, uh, researchers, uh, development partners who play a vital role in shaping the mental agenda of the country. Uh, then we also have young people, including our colleagues from, from schools who participated in this exercise. And then the type of people we engaged were marginalized, as you saw in the video, uh, MSM, as well as people from the um, LGBTQ plus communities, uh, commercial sex workers, and so on and so forth. We also conducted some um, individualized interviews uh, with other institutions like WHO, um, basic needs, and so on and so forth. So for engagement with ecosystem players, we are happy to display some of the the features highlighting what activities went there. The methodology was very simple. Um, on the eve of the engagement, we reproached the various people based on their experience, interests, and expertise. And each group had a set of questions to deliberate, and which all these set of questions fit to the focus of the project. Thereafter, a focal person or a lead from each of the groups comes to present what the group has discussed. And this, this presentation was followed by um, discussions or questions and answer sessions where people do not understand what was presented. We 
at present or people add on if they feel that this is necessary. So this methodology was used for all the stakeholders that were engaged and for young people, the same thing, we are excited to have them there again join us in this presentation. Key informant interviews was held with um, WHO UNICEF, Basic Needs, World Vision and the Mental Health Authority because these were identified as major ecosystem players in the, in the mental health space in Ghana. The online surveys was also um, administered to generate additional data on the priority mental health as well as priority drivers. Our reasoning was to scope as much as possible whatever information exists from the put all this together to be able to make a good sense of the situation in Ghana. And of course, for the online survey, we recommended our colleagues who participated also recommend other people who they think fits to respond to the survey. So we use this approach and we are able to get some good responses from our online survey. And then all these responses from the scoping review, from the stakeholder engagement, from the uh, uh, key format interviews, and from the online service were put together and produced a document that we did try for consensus building documents. In that document, you will see the range of mental health issues that have been identified affecting young people in Ghana, you will also see priority drivers, what are driving the mental health of these young people. You will see um, the intervention that exists currently or the intervention areas that could be invested or that, that can be harnessed to improve young people's mental health, as well as the research trends and characteristics that can be pursued to further advance young people's mental health. So this consensus document was key and that was what was shared with um, a lot of stakeholders who were possibly chosen because of their influence and in their understanding of the mental health purposes. So we uploaded the contents of the consensus document online onto a platform called Menti. It's a voting platform that allows people to vote simultaneously on a range of issues which allows you to rank the votes based on people's priorities. So that was done and uh, it's culminated. Yeah, so this is um, a typical stakeholder engagement session um, with the key stakeholders and some individualized sessions and CJs. So this gave us the results the results that we got, and I have to say that it is an extensive work, and so we generated a lot of data, and we are not able to present all the findings, but we are happy to highlight the key ones which we expect to drive the discussions and any other engagement forward as far as long people's mental health is concerned. So first, is to look at the priority mental health issues. And this, reaffirming what has been said previously, we see depression to be outstanding as one of the issues. And the literature from cross-sectional studies have reported as high as 67% prevalence of depression or depressive symptoms in young people. This is followed by substance use issues, which were felt as high as 16.2% of the people that took part in some of these studies. And then anxiety could be as high as 64%. And then stress could be as high as 65%. For suicidal behaviors, which include ideations, plans, and attempts, of course, and also wishing it to be dead. Okay. This can also be as high as 24% in 
our young people. But political gambling, which we may say includes betting, is also quite high, affecting about 30% of the people that took part in some of these studies. So clearly, there are mental health issues that our young people are going through. Maybe we, we may not know that much, but at least through this exercise, we will find out that there's a lot going on with our young people that we may not be aware of. So it is time for us to begin to take action to respond to small these issues. It is not enough to identify that they have mental health issues, but the key intervention that they, they do have mental health issues, but what is it? It's cultural issues, also cultural issues, or global issues environmental issues that could be responsible for these young people's mental health issues. And this takes me to my next slide on the drivers of treatment, neglect, and also bullying. This exposures precipitates symptoms of depression, and enhance or gravitate young people to abuse substance as a way to cope with the pressures, induce a lot of stress, making them anxious, and for some people, having to sign down ideations. If we take also academic and school level factors, we can make mention of bullying again as one of those unique experiences that young people face. We can mention performance expectations. Now it's like a competition for parents. They expect a lot from their, their young ones in school. And there's so much sometimes unnecessary comparisons, even among siblings. So sibling A got an A, and sibling B is struggling to get a D. And it's always the one who's struggling to get a D receiving the function. What we do then is to be devaluing the person and that goes a long way to affect their self-efficacy and the belief they have in themselves to be able to do certain things for, for their lives. We also talk about competition even among the students or people, young people in general. And for those who have finished university as young people, they are competing to start driving great universities living at this level and having some kind of lifestyle. But this competition put them through necessary stress, sleepless nights, then because they want to meet certain standards. And of course, with recent um, free school policy that has expanded the enrollment, we have seen overcrowding in our schools. And this overcrowding has its attendant effects, including poor ventilation, increase in risk-taking behaviors. And for those in boarding school, we can make mention of poor nutrition. And all these things are substantial mental health issues that can propel young people's mental health. And if these are not tackled, then the exposure to stress is elevated, depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms, substance use, and suicidal ideations becomes what follows next in these young people. So these are some of the drivers that we have identified and treated for this project and they are actually going to be in to support this mission. So I'm happy for that opportunity to work with you uh, as you may know. Uh, myself is Samuel I don't know to you. So I don't have to introduce myself again. Um, then we were supported by Dallas. Organizing meetings and, and so on and so forth. So 
we are very grateful for your support uh, in executing this project. And we know that as and when there are more projects, because of your dedication and commitment, we'll still be able to work with you. And for anyone who wants to work with them, please, they are fine. The Arise Network, which was mentioned earlier on, the network um, funded by the Harvard PhD Council of Public Health in partnership with the African Academy for Public Health and is hosted actually by the African uh, Academy. It's not an uh, African Health. Then for the program, we are grateful to the BIN initiative for this uh, initiative, or the BIN initiative, is a initiative that we love the initiative. And then for making funding available for this project, we say gradually this Canada, we are grateful. And we thank you so much. Please make more money available and we can do more research and don't go to We say thank you. Please, you can scan the the code to get access to the reports of this project that was published online. Thank you very much. Please let me down to the IT. The code is a part of the
traitor to call it, bullying people around. The school will do what the school can do and later invite your parents. So parents need to be involved in preventing bullying. And our last question goes to Mami Pokua. What can be done to stop to prevent people from bullying? We can prevent it by intensive education.
playing the perpetrator, the one suffering victim, the one standing looking at us, the person being bullied, surprised at death. They all need counsel. Let us not judge them or them. Let us get closer to them to counsel them. Thank you very much.
it, they can appreciate that. And lastly, I watched the documentary. These are findings can influence the content of the policies while well noted. Thanks for, for that. And a proposal on the school psychologist. Fortunately, the Department of Psychology and the of Ghana, I'm sure, will have a discussion to see how they can lobby in the Ghana Education Service and Ministry of Education to see if they can to produce school psychologists for the purposes of advancing school like that as well. So that's what's going on. Um, two questions to be addressed. Examination stress, what can be done?
I articulated in my, you know, uh, in the documentary, is for us to really, you know, uh, strengthen school based mental health programs. I think Professor Adunola well articulated that. As a lecturer, we are a little bit of that. It's really addressing uh, what they say that nothing for us without us. Exactly. And I believe that if this initiative is taken upon us and having collaborators involved, taken upon and disseminating this information further, that comes to my question as well. How, how possible can we disseminate these findings further to a wider group so that these things are taken up? As well as looking at the school curriculum, how best can we incorporate something like this into the school curriculum such that even as facilitators as we are going through training, we get all aspects of these that we have a holistic approach when training children to become a better adult, to become understanding and empathetic as we, we are um, um, advocating. So thank you for commending you and how best can we disseminate these information further to a wider group. Alright, thank you very much. So I'll take two questions online, then I'll come back to do so So can you put the questions for me? So this is Emmanuel Kutatongo, who has joined us online. He has two questions. Are there pedagogical contexts on bullying taught in schools, so limited to what you are saying? And then the second one is, what is the level of support for community health nurses? to implement such activities, yeah? Okay, so these are three questions, and um, I would leave it for the academicians to address it. Yes. So I'm sure the first one, uh, Madam, you have counseling in your training curriculum. I have been to training for this, I think. <laughs> So is there a kind of bullying, something like bullying, something in the training curriculum? Like teachers come to recognize supports. Yeah, so in training teachers, the curriculum they use to train teachers, they can train teachers, they can plan them to become one by two. Is there contents of bullying? The teachers are taught how to support children who are bullied.
is not just about Ministry of Health, General Service, or Education. There needs to be a group that must come together and make the systems to speak to each other, connect the system. Right now, everything is isolated, and that's why the young people are suffering. Because there is no place for them to call in if they need help. And then anonymously moved out of the danger zone. It doesn't happen. If you are abused by your father, you continue to be abused by your father until you, either your father dies or your brother rises, then you need to that situation. Or your brother becomes an adult and kills your father when he realizes what his father has been doing to his sisters. That is the situation that we have in West Africa. So I think there is need for us to begin to look at those three angles. Not just the personal part, which is the one that is handled in the school, talking to them. No matter how much we talk to them, there is a limit to what they can do as students. So I just wanted to bring down those three angles. We need to continue to talk about this. It's something I'm very passionate about. I have a teenage daughter. I saw my teenage daughter become suicidal. I saw that. You know, and I had to intervene because I'm a psychologist. Imagine if I wasn't. And it is still work, it's taking me years. That's my daughter. You can now imagine what is happening in order. So I'm very, you know, I feel this really very personally. I'm very uh, touched by this research. I took the library notes. I'm going to look at it again. Thank you so much for all this content. And connect to the people who can do something. Thank you. So the conversation that we end here, let's talk about it. One of my students was from class three, three three, was always sexually abused. My name is Joseph Fatika from the Tatum Social Worker. And issues of abuse, if it's just bullying, there's a normal bullying, it's a different issue. But when it comes to issues of abuse, whether it's from the parents or from the school or from the
we did not expect this. <laughs> so thank you for being justice to our partnership and I look forward to so much more. Um, so as introduced, my name is Mary Ben Sandra. I'm truly honored to be here today with um, my colleagues uh, from the Africa Academy and also um, being introduced. But I would like to just uh, introduce them by name so they stand. So um, much as we have done this work together as a page, but we always have somebody at the center and at the core, ensuring that everything has been noticed, everything has been prepared, and just identify where is the meeting happening, where is the venue, we bring our chairs to the meeting up. So we have to do that. I would like to further stress the importance of community engagement, like for doing here and stakeholders, parents, and caregivers, and young people, and individuals with lived experiences. We really appreciate them sharing, like the ones that we heard in the video that was very well um, documented, uh, and thanks a lot to Derek and team for leading that great work. Ladies and gentlemen, I am inspired by the continued commitment and dedication Together, we have laid the groundwork for a future where young people in our communities can thrive, they can flourish, and do so much to get rid of the burden of mental health issues and inequities across the world. Lastly, may I extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Thank you for inviting us back here to Ghana. Thank you so much to Mental Health Authority for being ready contribute and to guide. We understand policies and guidelines really can still be spearheaded by your leadership from the Mental Health Authority and all other partners. Representatives from local and international organizations such as the World Health Organization, please pass our regards to the ref, the Ben, <laughs> the FCDO, who unfortunately we know uh, for reasons they're not here today, but Benzin meets Ghana, thank you very much. Our young people, once again, Thank you very much, and people with lived experience. Lastly, again, Professor uh, Sam Adjololo, but also with uh, Professor uh, Dr. Adam Menu. We thank you so much for accepting our invitation to collaborate in this project. We're very happy for the successful outcome, and we look forward to hopefully continue next steps uh, together. Should we be able to, we'll be very happy to embark on. Derek, Esther, and Sam. A hand of applause again to all of you. Thank you so much for all the efforts that you've done with our lead of the study to advance this work. We know it has not been easy, but it is usually the difficult things that keep us awake, they excite us, they say we need to meet and solve this. We need to meet and take care of this. Everything is so smooth, sometimes it's boring. So thank you so much for making sure this uh, happens. I also express heartfelt appreciation to our dedicated team at APH, those that are here and those that are back home, and our collaborating partners. When we were doing this application, we requested our, our collaborators within the network to help us review our application, and we got some very good inputs to improve and strengthen our application. So even though in absence, we would like to appreciate colleagues from the Harvard and Chancellor of Public Health, from Harvard Institute of, uh, of uh, Global Health, so many others within the Arise Network. If you don't allow me to stop, I will keep you holding the lunch that I know is ready for all of us. And so with this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say thank you so much for listening, and we look forward to um, next steps that are very able and see will carry us through. In Swahili, we say, Asante San. Can everybody say that? Asante Again.
everybody comes knocking, calling for discussions around these issues, please show interest and participate actively and forcefully. Because we are doing this with agenda and the young ones to actually grow healthy, socially responsible, spiritually okay, financially sound. Okay, so our guests sit down, kindly sit down for me. Then we have um, our part. Okay, are you ready? Also, so please after us, you join the young people should join, and then we are there. Chief consultant. <laughs> 